greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So uh, this morning we are uh, sitting in the presence of God to listen uh, the word of God and uh, this is the time to listen the word of God. So let us all uh, sit in the presence of God uh, with a prayerful attitude so that uh, uh, I believe that God will speak to us in, uh, in a special way uh, 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 this morning. I mean, God is going to speak to us in a special, uh, a, a special way this morning. And actually, uh, two weeks ago, uh, I had been preaching uh, on a title uh, called uh, uh, David, the Lonely and the Restless Person, I mean, or Bird. I mean, and it was uh, uh, from Psalm number 102, uh, verses 6 and 7. I mean, so we already... Uh, completed uh, uh, thinking about uh, three birds with uh, uh, which David is trying to compare himself and uh, uh, explained about uh, uh, the different situations uh, which he had been uh, going through. I think uh, uh, I already preached about, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, three birds like uh, the pelican uh, of the wilderness and uh, the owl of the empty place or the waste place. And the third one was the sparrow uh, on the housetop, amen? And today's message is going to be the third session of the same title uh, that was the David, the lonely and the restless bird. And this is going to be the final session uh, of this title, amen? So now let us uh, uh, turn uh, our attention to Psalm number uh, 55, verse six. Psalm number 55, verse six. So today, uh, the memory verses will be read by uh, dear Elsa. Elsa is going to read the memory verses uh, of today. So uh, Elsa, you can read now Psalm number 55, verse 6. And I say, oh, that I have wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Amen. Amen. So we know that uh, Psalm number 55 is uh, uh, written by David and uh, in verse 6, uh, he is comparing himself with an, another bird that is dove. Okay, he is comparing himself with an, another bird that is dove. I mean, and he says, "If I had the wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest and be at rest." So the fourth bird is the dove, which has the wings to fly away. I mean, the the the, the dove which has the wings to fly away. That is from uh, Psalm number 55, verse 6. I mean, here in this verse, David, I mean, says, if I had a wing like a dove, then I would fly away and be at rest. So here, I mean, his desire, David's desire is to fly away from the problems, just like a dove, and to be secured like a dove, and to be secured like a dove. Dove is a bird which represents the character of innocence, blameless, and in integrity. I mean, innocence, blameless, and integrity. I mean, so before comparing his life with Dao, David is explaining his situation. That is in uh, uh, Psalm number uh, 55, verses uh, 3, 4, and 5. I mean, so it is very clearly written, I mean, what he says just before comparing uh, his life experience with, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the dog that we will read that verses, maybe uh, Psalm number 55, verses 3, 4, and 5. Because of the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me, and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and, trem and trembling come upon me, and the horror overwhelms me. Yes. So these three verses speaks about, I mean, how he was treated by his enemies and his friends. The enemy speaks against him. The enemy speaks against him. The wicked people threaten him. The wicked people threaten him. I mean, and also they make unnecessary accusations against David. And his heart is anxious within him. I mean, he is having the terrors of the death. He is having the terrors of the death. And he is fearful and trembling. And also we, we read it in, in, from that verse that is, the horror has overwhelmed him. The horror has overwhelmed him. That means because of the false accusations of his enemies, 
he is desiring to fly away from the problems just like a dove and to be secured like a dove. I mean, so that means because, you know, the, he was, I mean, facing many accusations from the enemies. He was facing many, I mean, I mean, a bad treatment from the, I mean, his enemies and also from his, uh, I mean, friends. So let us think about some of the special characteristics of a dove mentioned in the Bible. You know, when you look into the Bible, I mean, we read that, I mean, there are many special characteristics of a dove mentioned in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. I mean, so when we read the book of Song of Solomon, the book of Song of Solomon, the church also is sometimes compared to a dove for its innocence, for its modesty, for its chastity, and for its, I mean, purity and affection, and also for the laws of its mate and for its fearfulness, especially in Song of Solomon chapters two, four, and six. Okay, so when you go through Song of Solomon chapter two, four, and six, we understand, you know, the, the, the special characteristics of a dog, which is mentioned in those chapters. I mean, so there are many verses, but we will be, I mean, trying to read, I mean, maybe two or three verses from the book of Solomon and to show, I mean, how the bird dog is compared with the church of God, okay? So there are many verses, we'll be reading only a few verses. We can, we can see from there that, uh, I mean, the dog is, uh, I mean, having many, I mean, special characteristics and how the dog is compared with the church of God, I mean, the Christian church of God. I mean, now we will read uh, uh, the uh, first verse that is from uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 14. Yeah. Oh, my dove in the clefts of the rock, in the crannies of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Amen. So here we see the dove in the clefts of the rock, right? In the clefts of the rock and in the hiding places on the mountain side. I mean, this dog, which speaks about in, 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 in a Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 14, that, I mean, dog is in the, in, the, in the clefts of the rock and in the hiding places of the mountain side. And the bridegroom says that, I mean, to the bride, that show me your face, show me your face and let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet. Your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. Amen. Which means the spiritual beauty of the Christian church and the word of our mouth must be lovely and sweet and attractive. That's the reason, I mean, the bridegroom is speaking about the bride or the doe that, I mean, the, the spiritual beauty of a Christian church. And also, I mean, the word of our mouth of, of a believer, I mean, must be very lovely and sweet and attractive. That means whenever we speak to a person, the other person, you know, let them, let them be attracted by the word of ours and let them, I mean, see Jesus through our words. Let them, let them understand oh, how sweet he is and how, I mean, loudly he is speaking and how politely he is speaking. So that should be the character of a believer. I mean, that we read from uh, the I mean, Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 14 about the dog, the character and the characteristics of, of a dog. I mean, secondly, we will read uh, uh, the uh, uh, chapter 4, verse 7, Song of Solomon chapter 4, verse 7. Yeah. You are altogether beautiful, my love. There is no flaw in you. Yes. So here in this particular verse, here we see Dao is a symbol of perfect beauty. Dao is a symbol of perfect beauty, or you can call it as a perfection. Okay. So it says that you are altogether beautiful, my beloved. There is no imperfection in you. There is no imperfection in you. This is the clear translation of that verse. I mean, there is no imperfection in you, which means the Christian church must be longing to, to, to be spiritually, I mean, spiritually beautiful and perfect like a dog. We are supposed to be spiritually beautiful. We are supposed to be, I mean, spiritually perfect, just like a dog. In our, in our words and in our deeds and every, every aspect of our life and every realms of our life should be very perfect in the sight of God. I mean, so that's the reason, I mean, we are comparing the characteristics of dough with a Christian believer. I mean, so it says that the spiritual beautiful and the perfection of a Christian, of a believer. 
I mean, again, we will read one more verse from Song of Solomon. I mean, that is uh, 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 chapter 6, verse 9. Chapter 6, verse 9 of Song of Solomon. Yep. My dove, my perfect one, is the only one, the only one of her mother, pure to her who bore her. The young woman saw her and called her blessed. The queens and the concubines also, and they praised her. Okay, here, the next, next thing about the dove is... We see that Dao is a representation of innocence and purity. Dao is a representation of innocence and purity. I mean, when we think about the innocence of David in Psalm number uh, 102, verse, I mean, two, that we will read that verse also. Psalm number 100, and, sorry, 101, verse 2. Psalm number 101, verse 2. I will ponder the way that is blameless. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk in the in integrity of your of heart within my house. In this verse, David says that, okay, I will behave myself wisely in a blameless or innocent way. I will behave myself wisely in a blameless or innocent way. Oh, when will you come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I mean, so we understand from the life experience of David also that he was a really, I mean, an innocent person. Okay, so this, I mean, particular verse, uh, Psalm number 101, verse 2 speaks about the innocent, I mean, I mean, David. You know, we, we understand from the life history of uh, David also that he was really an uh, innocent person. Especially, I mean, when we, I mean, when we read uh, First Samuel chapter 24, 1 Samuel chapter 24, there we see that for, I mean, Saul, the king, was following David to defeat him. Saul, the king of Israel, he was, I mean, following always, I mean, David, I mean, so, uh, David to, to, to defeat him, to, to, to kill him. One day, David and his uh, I mean, people and also Saul and his soldiers were stuck together inside the same cave. They all were together in the same cave. I mean, the people with David, I mean, I mean, I told him that this is the day that the Lord spoke of when he said to that, I will give your enemy into hands for you to defeat or deal with as you wish. I mean, so that, 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 that's the, that's the I mean, opinion, I mean, from the I mean, people of God who was with David. They were saying that, okay, I mean, this is, the, this is the golden opportunity for you to kill David, sorry, Saul, the king. Okay, so God has given Saul in your hands. You are together in, a, in the same cave. But David just cut off the edge of the Saul's drop. That's what we read in, I mean, First Samuel chapter 24. Okay, so we will read, uh, I mean, ch uh, chapter 24, verse 5. Chapter 24, verse 5. And afterward, David's heart struck him because he had to cut off the corner of Saul's robe. So just remember one thing. That was the golden opportunity for David to kill Saul the king, right? That is the golden opportunity for him. But he did not do that. And we read in, in this particular verse that afterward, David's conscience bothered him because he cut off the edge of the Saul's robe. He cut off the edge of the Saul's robe. That is the innocence of, of David. I mean, so we understand, you know, it was, a, it was a chance for him to kill, I mean, even Saul the king, but he did not do that. I mean, he just, I mean, cut off the edge of the Saul's robe, even, even because of that. His conscience bothered him, I mean, only because of the cutting off the edge of the Saul's straw. I mean, that means that much innocent and blameless was David. I mean, there was no chance for him to, I mean, say that, okay, he's a blaming person and, and he's not an innocent person, but he was an innocent person and he was doing everything out of uh, his innocency, I mean, of a heart. I mean, praise God. And there are many men of God in Bible, even we can see that, uh, you know, they, they, they were desiring to lead a holy life, an innocent life and walk in godly ways and walk blamelessly and innocent. Okay, there are many people in the Bible, we can see that they were always longing to I mean, lead a holy life. And they were always longing to walk in godly ways and blamelessly and innocent. I mean, about, uh, uh, for example, about Noah, we read in uh, uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, um, something, I mean, we read that verse, okay. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. Yes, what is that? Noah was a righteous man, 
blameless among the people of his time and he walked faithfully with God. Amen. So when Noah was living in this world, we understand that, I mean, all the other people, all the other people were wicked and they were, I mean, doing all the sins and they were, I mean, wicked people. I mean, I mean there was nobody to, to be called as a righteous people. But God said to Noah that you make, a, make an ark. And I mean, I found that you are going to be the righteous people and the family is going to be righteous people. And I'm going to deliver you. I mean, so that's what we read about Noah. And we read here in this particular verse that Noah was a righteous man and he was a blameless among the people of his time. That means the people of, the, of his generation. And, and he walked faithfully with God. Hallelujah. So we must be innocent and blameless in the sight of God like a dog. This is the reason that I am explaining about the, the special characteristics of dog. I mean, we must be always innocent in the presence of God. And we must be always blameless in the presence of God, in the sight of God, just like a dog. I mean, that's what we read in Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. We read that. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be bl blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of the crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Yes. What is that, I mean? In this particular verse, Paul, Apostle Paul says that do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. No one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God. Remember one thing, we are the children of God. We are the children of God. I mean, we are supposed to lead a holy life and also a, a, a life, I mean, without complaining or without arguing anything. I mean, let, let us be clean in the presence of God. Let us be innocent in the presence of God. I mean, I mean, shining like, I mean, bright lights in, in, in a world, I mean, full of, I mean, I mean, crooked and perverse generation. Hallelujah. That's what we read, uh, I mean, in, in this particular, I mean, I mean, verse. Again, we see Dao uh, is, is a representation of peace and purity and holiness in the Old Testament. When you go through the Old Testament verses, especially, I mean, uh, there are many uh, verses to read, but uh, I mean, we will be uh, looking into uh, Genesis chapter 8. You know, when you read Genesis chapter 8, it is very clearly written about the dog. What was happening there, the incident which happened there during the time of the flood of Noah. You know, so the, it, it is I mean, there, I mean, the, the dog is mentioned in, in that passage. We read about dog in Genesis chapter 8, like I mean, during the time of Noah, there was a flood for, I mean, 150 days. And after the flood, I mean, Noah sent out a dough to see if the water had receded, I mean, from the surface of the ground. But we read the dough could not find a resting place because there was water over all the surface of the earth. I mean, so it returned to Noah. What happened? He, I mean, the, the dough doesn't have any a resting place in that, I mean, in that area. And the dough is returning back to Noah in the ark, in the ark. And after seven days, I mean, Noah again sent out the dough for the, for, from the ark. And this time, what happened? When the dough returned to him in the evening, there in big was fleshly flecked olive leaf. There was a fleshly flecked olive leaf in the beak of the dough. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. Then Noah sent the dough out, I mean, after another week, seven days, seven days, seven days. I mean, three times Noah is sending the dough to check with whether the, 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 the water, the, the flow of the water or the level of the water is, I mean, I mean dried up. Okay, so I mean, uh, this time, the third time, what happened? The dog didn't return back to him. Then he confirmed that the surface of the ground was dried up. I mean, so this incident, when you when you think about this incident, I mean, when I mean, uh, he was I mean, uh, Noah was I mean, sending the dog to to check the I mean, situation of the flood. You know, this incident speaks about the I mean, dog is the representation of peace and purity and holiness. Hallelujah, peace, purity, and 
holiness. You know, the reason that, I mean, uh, uh, I mean the dough was not finding any resting place in that area because it was, it was, I mean, it was defied and it was destroyed. That, that, that place was unclean place. It was not a clean place. Okay, so that's the reason that, I mean, it was not finding any, any resting place in that area and the dough came back to, I mean, Noah. I mean, so let me let me give you an example uh, about the dough. Uh, maybe uh, uh, some of you may be remembering uh, your olden uh, days back in India. Okay, we will go to India now. Okay, so back to India. When you think about uh, uh, the, your your childhood time, or uh, I mean your uh, uh, olden days, you know. So uh, think about that. The olden, uh, you know, the church buildings of those days, the church buildings of those days. I still remember uh, our mother church in Nilambur in Kerala. Uh, those days, the roof of that church, uh, I mean, building uh, was made of tiles. I mean, it was made of, I mean, tiles. I mean, and under the roof, there is a, there is a uh, space uh, made of woods. Okay, that space is made of woods. And nowadays it is concreted buildings and everything. Okay, so most of the time, we used to see the doors, not only uh, not only the doors, even the sparrows also. I mean, make their particular space, that particular space, wooden space, uh, as their house of uh, or their nets or something. Okay, so because they know that church is the place. I mean, where they get the peace. They know that church is the place where they get the peace, and they get the security and protection and comfort in the church. So that's the reason they are making their house or or, or nest. I mean, I mean, uh, under the uh, under the roof means the, the 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 vacant. I mean, space is there. I mean, which is made out of the woods. I mean, so that means you know they can listen the music and songs and pastors, sermon and everything which is happening in the church. I mean, and sometimes you know, uh, in between uh, the, the worship service, hallelujah, in the, in, the, in the worship service, when when the worship services are going on, the dogs used to uh, make a special noise. Okay, the the dogs will make a uh, uh, the special noise, and uh, uh, we had an we had an Apachan pastor uh, there also in those days. You know, we have an Apachan pastor here also, and there also in our childhood uh, uh, there was an Apachan pastor. So uh, I, I mean, uh, in in our childhood time, we used to uh, ask him, Apacha, uh, uh, why these dogs are making sound and noise? Why uh, while we are singing and worshiping? So uh, the, uh, that Apachan uh, told us that, okay, uh, Mone, uh, you know one thing, uh, those birds are trying to uh, praise God uh, in, in their own language. So don't disturb them, let them uh, sing with us and let them enjoy. I mean, so that was the answer of that, uh, I mean, reply of that Apachan. And he was saying, okay, don't disturb them because, I mean, let them be there. I mean, they are, they may be praising God with us. I mean, when we are praising, when we are, I mean, clapping our hands and when we are uh, making sound and when we are, I um, mean, singing songs and those also are, they are also singing and they are praising their God and uh, with their own language. Okay, so don't, uh, I mean, disturb them, let them enjoy, let them worship God. I mean, so the dog never stay in a dirty place and always looks for a clean and neat areas to stay, right? Always the dome is not staying at a, at a dirty place. It is, it is always looking for a clean place and neat place, okay? So this must be the character of a believer. I mean, this must be the character of a believer, I mean? So uh, uh, even when we look into the New Testament, when we look into the New Testament, I mean, we see the believers must be the like a dome. Okay, even we, we have been thinking about the from the Old Testament. Now we will go to the New Testament. The New Testament says that I mean the believers, each believer should be like a dough, the character of the dough or characteristics of a dough. You know, when Jesus was speaking about sending, I mean, out the disciples to proclaim the gospel, he told them in Matthew chapter, I mean, Matthew chapter uh, 3, verse 16. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. You read that verse, yeah. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold, the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God ascending like a dove and coming to rest on him. Okay, what is that? I mean, it says that behold, I'm sending you out as sheep, the midst of the walls. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. I mean, so always, I mean, it says that in the New Testament, it says that every believer must be just like a dove. Innocent like a dove, blameless like a dove, holy like a dove, 
perfect in spiritual beauty like a dove. Hallelujah. So dove is the representation of the Holy Spirit in New Testament. That is the next point. Dove is the representation of the Holy Spirit in New Testament. That's what we read in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. 16. I mean, so it shows that importance of the baptism and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our Christian life. You know, when Jesus was baptized, I mean, he went up to the straight way out of the water and the heavens were opened unto him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. Hallelujah, which shows the importance of the baptism and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our Christian life. Hallelujah. And, you know, uh, we, now we will go to the, I mean, the, the, the last portion. That means uh, uh, the, uh, the, the I mean, text verse that was uh, from uh, uh, Psalm number, uh, I mean, 55 verse 6. Uh, once again, we will read that verse. And I say, oh, that I have wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. This is very important to understand, you know. We see a different aspect of David's character. And he says, even though I like to be like a dove, I like to be holy, I like to be clean like a dove, I like to be innocent like a dove, and I like to be blameless like a dove and not making any troubles for others. My enemies always try to accuse me of some false cause. They speak many, thing, many things against me very badly. And they treat me very badly. I mean, and you know, we have to think about something. He was, I mean, uh, speaking many things about, uh, I mean, how, I mean, the, the, the enemies and the friends were, I mean, attacking him and how they were treating uh, David uh, in, in chapter, I mean, uh, Psalm 55 verses, I mean, through two, three and four, I mean, uh, uh, in the, uh, three, four and five verses. Okay, what was that? I mean, they were always, I mean, accusing him for many things. I mean, they were, I mean, speaking against him. Okay, all the things out there at the same time, he says that, okay, I just want to be just like a dove, blameless, innocent, clean, holy. I don't want to trouble anyone. I don't want to, I mean, accuse anyone. And I, I, I don't want to make a trouble for anyone of the people. And, and even though they are speaking against me very badly and they are treating me very badly. And he says that if I had a wings like a dove, then I would fly away and be at rest. Man, this is a particular verse that he is speaking about. You know, he, he was just desiring, oh, if I had a wings like a dove, then I would fly away and be at rest. I mean, so that, that's the that's meaning that we understand from this portion that, I mean, David was always thinking about, I mean, uh, David was always thinking about, okay, if I would have a wings like a dove, I would, I would have fly I mean, away from this place and I will take a rest. I mean, so this is a kind of escapism. You have to understand one thing. You know, he was going through the troubles. David was going through the problems. I mean, he was going through many, I mean, issues in his life. I mean, David is having, I mean, many challenges in his life. You know, what is happening here? He is trying to escape, I mean, from the problems. He is trying to escape from the problems now. I mean, he is saying that, okay, uh, if I would have, I mean, given the wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. I mean, let's just remember one thing, that we will have to face some of the issues and believe that Almighty God will strengthen us to face the challenges in our Christian life. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that the presence of God will enable you and me to, 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 to I mean, face the challenges of our Christian life? Hallelujah. Never try to escape from the problems and challenges of our life. Trust in the Lord and fight against the life challenges of our life. I mean, because every challenge is a stepping stone to our success. Hallelujah. So this morning, I mean, I would like to, I mean, give you, I mean, some of the points like, I mean, we are supposed to be, I mean, I mean, faithful in the presence of God. We are supposed to be, I mean, perfect in the presence of God. We are supposed to be, I mean, always, I mean, looking unto 
the Lord and ask, asking for the strength of God, asking for the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Yes, there are many challenges in our life. There are many, I mean, I mean, issues in our life. There are many, I mean, problems in our life. Hallelujah. But I mean, whenever we trust in the Lord, whenever we pray in the presence of God, and whenever, I mean, we pray the Lord, I mean, I need your power and your presence in now, Mr. God. I mean, God will strengthen you. Hallelujah. So this is the time to, I mean, surrender our life in the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. Shall we all close our eyes in the presence of God? Hallelujah. I request everyone, everyone to close your eyes in the presence of God and let us let us pray together in the presence of God and let's say the Lord, oh Lord, I'm coming to your presence of God. We are coming to your presence of God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I mean, as we are, I mean, submitting ourselves with the mighty hand of God, as we are praying together, hallelujah, I request uh, I mean, uh, dear, I mean, uh, brother, I mean, Reggie will be praying now. Uh, brother Reggie will be praying now. I mean, I mean, let us pray together in the presence of God. Hallelujah. As we were listening the word of God this morning, hallelujah. God's presence, I mean, in, in, in our midst, hallelujah. And God is with us this morning, hallelujah. I mean, God was speaking to us very, very tremendous way. I mean, this morning that, I mean, hallelujah. Let us all surrender our life in the presence of God. Hallelujah. What is that? Let us pray together. Hallelujah. Let me remind you about the main points of today's message hallelujah let me remind you the main points of today's message hallelujah i mean let, I mean, let us go through that message and uh, i mean the special characteristics of dough the special characteristics of dough what is that let us have the spiritual beauty and let the word of our mouth be accepted to god hallelujah remember one thing I mean, the, the, the special characteristics of the dough is uh, its very beauty. I mean, it's, it's, it's it all together, it's beautiful. I mean, and it, ha it has the, its, its noise and its, its I mean, words are very acceptable and attractive, just like that. I mean, this morning, this is our time to, I mean, surrender our life in the presence of God and let us desire, let us have the desire. I mean, that, oh Lord, help us to be, I mean, spiritually beauty in the presence of God. I mean, let the word of our mouth be acceptable to God. Let that be pleasable to God. I mean, let us keep that spiritual perfection like a dog. It says that Bible says that, I mean, dog it is the representation of the perfection. If then let us have that perfection, spiritual perfection. I mean, let us long for that. Let us desire for that. Oh Lord, I need the spiritual perfection in my life, oh God. Hallelujah. Just like a dog. Hallelujah. Let us have that innocence and purity and holiness in our life. Hallelujah. We are not supposed to go everywhere. We are not supposed to be, I mean, deal with every everything. But we have a limitation. We have a boundary. I mean, the people of God, the children of God, you have a word of God and you have a Bible with you. Read the Bible and understand the meaning of the Bible and go through that and meditate the Bible. And we have to, I mean, surrender, I mean, according to the word of God. Hallelujah. So we must be very pure and we must be very, I mean, I mean, innocent and we should show the purity in our Christian life. Hallelujah. We must be very holy in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And also let us long for a peace and let us be peacemakers. Hallelujah. I mean, just like a dog. Dog was always longing and desiring for the peace. And also, low, I, mean, I mean, a dog was always, I mean, I mean, making the peace for others. And let us be the peacemakers for others. Hallelujah. Wherever we go, even in the church and even in the family, in our society, in our country, wherever, in our job place and working place. Hallelujah. Let us pray the Lord. I mean, make me, make me a peacemaker. I mean, I just want to become a peacemaker for others, hallelujah. I mean, there are many struggles happening around us. I mean, there are many issues happening around us. I mean, let, let the believer, let the Christian be a peacemaker for others, the people, those who are going through the struggles in their life, hallelujah. So this is the time for that. And, and let us, I mean, let us pray the Lord, let's be filled with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Just like, I mean, when, I mean, Jesus was taking the baptism, I mean, under the hands of, I mean, John the Baptist, I mean, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Just me, I mean, we read that again. The Holy Spirit came down in the in the image of dough and I mean abiding I mean, upon Jesus Christ. Let us have that infilling of the Holy Spirit in our life. Hallelujah. Let us be filled with the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let us I mean be filled and guided with the I mean the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. Hallelujah. And let us not flee away from the problems, rather, let us try to face the challenges in our life. Hallelujah. Most of the time, I mean, we are also thinking and we uh, sometimes, you know, uh, when, when we are going through the troubles in our life, when we are going through the challenges in our life, we are thinking, okay, I mean, if I would have a, I mean, wings like a dove, I would have, I mean, flee away from this, I mean, problems and everything. We are trying to escape. 
from the problems. Hallelujah. But sometimes, I mean, God is putting you in trouble. God is putting you in, a, in an issue. And God is putting you in a problem because the reason is, the reason is, I mean, you have to change and you have to challenge and you have to face the challenges. You have to face that, I mean, that problems and you have to go through that problem. Hallelujah. Because that is, that is one of the lessons for you. Hallelujah. And when you go through that challenges, when you go through the problems and troublesome situation, remember one thing. I mean, God will not leave you. Hallelujah. God will not leave you alone. I mean, God's presence is always with you. Hallelujah. Even then, you are going through the troubles and problems. Hallelujah. I mean, God will enable every one of us to, I mean, I mean, face the challenges of our life and face the, I mean, problems of our life. I mean, just like, I mean, let us leave just like a dove in our Christian life. Hallelujah. Let us be perfect in the presence of God. Let us, I mean, have the spiritual beauty in our life. Hallelujah. Let us be blameless and innocent and purity. I mean, in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let us be filled with the Holy Spirit and let us be, I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm leading a holy life in our, in our Christian life and let us surrender our life in the presence of God according to the word of God that we were, we were I mean, listening this morning and I request uh, Brother Reggie to lead us in prayer now. Praise God according to the word of God. Praise the Lord Jesus.